Hi everyone, it's Mark here from Dub Diaries and uh, it's been an interesting few days. I was uh, a couple of days ago contacted by an auto electronics firm and uh, they emailed me and they said, hey, we've seen uh, your video on the OBD Link LX and we'd like to send you a product to try. And I thought, well, uh, channels that are as small as mine probably don't get those uh, opportunities too very often. So I said, yeah, why not? Uh, send it across and uh, I'll have a look, but uh, be aware it will be an honest opinion. So it turned up in the mail yesterday. Uh, so uh, let's have a look and uh, see what it looks like. Okay, so uh, this is uh, the product uh, that they've sent me. It's from a company called Autofix. And this is their OM126 OBD2 code reader. Um, it has, uh, it's a cabled reader, so you don't need any uh, additional devices to use it. You can just plug it straight into the car. You don't need uh, or Android phone or iPhone, that kind of thing, um, which can be useful because uh, if you're not too tech savvy and you don't really want to be worrying about things like Bluetooth pairing uh, or if you don't want to have to use or drain your phone uh, or Android device uh, doing things on the car because sometimes it can take some time and then before you know it your phone is um, depleted uh, then this could be the product for you. Um, I have not uh, tried one of these before so uh, let's open it up and um, see what we get in the pack. Okay, so we have a, a product warranty card and it says here that it is warrantied for one year. Okay, so we have the warranty card. Uh, we have a certificate of um, quality there. Very good. Uh, we have the manual uh, and interestingly on the uh, I had a look at their Amazon uh, uh, sale page and um, it says on there that um, you need minimal uh, amount of uh, knowledge uh, of these sort of things to be able to use uh, the device and it looks like the entire manual is in English uh, and it's probably one of the more comprehensive manuals I've seen for this sort of thing. Okay, so let's get the thing out. Okay. So let's move that to one side there for a second and let's have a, have a better look at this. So uh, let's peel this off. There's a, a thing on the front there. Um, so uh, what have we got here? We've got um, quite, it's quite a solid device. Um, rubberized buttons, the screen is color and has uh, menu options. It's not a touch screen, but is apparently easy to um, navigate with the buttons. So we'll see about that when we come to plug it in and uh, you get a USB cable. Now the reason why you get the USB cable is that um, you can capture data with the device and plug it into your computer and print that device off, uh, print that device, uh, print that data off. And um, you can actually also update the software on the device. Um, uh, they do apparently release updates for it and it's just a case of plugging it in a micro USB socket on the bottom there and um, and then you're good to go apparently with an update. Cable I'd say is about uh, so it's about two foot long. Uh, the plug is uh, pretty solid and um, we've got some blurb on the back here and um, there we have all of the uh, compliant OBD2 protocols. Uh, so OBD2 came in on vehicles after 1996 in America and I think um, universally in um, the UK 
and Europe. I think it was a bit later than that. Um, certainly I had cars that were 1999 that weren't OBD2 compliant. I think they were about year 2000, something like that. If you do know the exact year OBD2 came in, then uh, do leave us a comment uh, in the comments section there, uh, just so um, everybody uh, can be aware. Okay, so, um, impressions of the unit are, it's quite solid. I would have liked to have seen a rubberized edge uh, around the side here, because if your hands are greasy, it could slip out. You've got some um, texture here uh, to be able to grab it. I mean, it's not very likely you're gonna, it's gonna slip out your hand. It is quite a chunky um, uh, unit though. I've got a friend who uh, is a car tech and um, he said he quite liked the size of it because he's got one uh, that he certainly paid more for and I think this device is around uh, 35 pounds. I shall put a link to uh, the Amazon pages in the UK and the US for it in the description. Uh, and he said he paid an awful lot more for his and for the money that he paid. Uh, he would have liked to have seen it a unit sort of this size. He said it was a nice size to um, uh, use. So uh, let's go and uh, plug it into the car and um, see what we uh, get in terms of menu options and uh, function. Okay, so we're in the MR2 and I'm going to plug it into the OBD2 port. Now, uh, what the instructions do say is that you must plug this device in uh, when the ignition is off and then um, turn the ignition on, use the device, and then turn the ignition off and unplug it. A lot of electrical uh, type things like that are a little bit sensitive to power surges if such thing happens. So uh, we'll plug it in now. Oh, I'll try not to drop it on the floor. Okay. So uh, it's plugged in and it automatically powers up and we can see here uh, that um, you get a splash screen and then after that you get the options. Now uh, in terms of navigation it's basically up and down arrows and that cycles through these uh, options here and then when your option that you want um, just hit the uh, enter button and uh, you're good to go. So um, let's just see if I can get it. There we go. So as we're pushing up, it just cycles through each of the options and you press down and you see a blue box there that tells you what it is that you've selected. So if we go into the about and see what's in there. So uh, that's the version, hardware and software version, the serial number uh, of the unit itself. So uh, exit and come out of there. Uh, now I haven't read the instruction manual at all, literally the first part of this video that you saw uh, looking at it in the package, I've literally come straight outside to uh, uh, test it because I want to see how intuitive it is for people who haven't perhaps used this sort of device before. Um, let's, uh, let's go back there, let's go into setup, what does setup have? Let's enter. Okay, so language is Quite a few languages there to choose from. I'm in English and obviously want the English. So to come out of the menu, yep, it's exit, uh, unit of measure. Okay, let's just cycle through. English and metric. So, uh, well, uh, I'm not too sure what the difference is between there, but I'm in the UK and we use metric, so that's fine with me. And. You can turn the beep off, I'm definitely going to do that because it's a little annoying. Um, record, you can choose to turn on and off the record feature and that's for live data. And then feedback, start recording. Okay, I'll have to check the menu, manual on that one because I'm not quite sure what that means by that. Uh, so let's exit out of there and come back out. Okay, so that's that. Now IM, there's an IM button here and it will allow you to have like an instant uh, health check. So let's press that. Let's see if it still picks that up okay. I think the MR2 is 9141, yep. Okay, so um, now 
Uh, I know for a fact that uh, obviously this car doesn't have exhaust gas recirculation because it's not a diesel, uh, but the car doesn't uh, support uh, evap and airflow checks uh, via the ECU. Uh, but it does do some other things. Now, interestingly, it's come up with a cap fault there. Uh, so I'll have to look into that, but it's not showing me a uh, engine check light. So uh, I'll have a little look into seeing what that might be, but I don't know. I mean, the car runs okay, but nevertheless, uh, the ECU's reporting something's amiss there. So let's exit out of there. And other than pressing that button, which brings it up instantly, you can select that option there and hit enter. And that, I guess that does the same thing. Yep, that does the same thing. So we'll exit out of there. Okay, let's go into OBD2, press enter. Just checking the system again. I have to say, it does check the system quicker than um, Talk Pro does because uh, in some instances, you can really be waiting a while uh, for all the different uh, OBD2 protocols to be checked. So that's the... Okay, so we've got some details there. And press enter again, and then you go into the diagnostic menu. So uh, we'll press, let's have a look and see what read codes is. Um, the values here just relate to the titles that's not how many codes there are so let's press enter for current codes and it has no code so that's good because that's what i'm expecting it's pending no that's good i know it's running okay and then permanent i don't think it supports it no it doesn't uh, so you've got to remember that what comes up here is going to be dependent on what your vehicle actually supports now i've got a jeep cherokee diesel um, 2003 and that does not support uh, much in terms of ECU diagnostic stuff at all um, so uh, I don't expect to see much on the Jeep in that respect uh, if we had any codes we could erase them there I am readiness let's see what that is okay I'm not sure the cost but oh, okay So, um, gives us a good sort of health check there, you know, even if um, we're not aware of anything. Uh, it gives us some good check. Interesting on the catalyst monitor, it says ink, so I'll have to check the manual on that one uh, to see what that means. And uh, what is it? This drive cycle. Failed to read IM data. Well, that's because it's not on a drive cycle, because it's stationary and the engine's not on. Okay. Okay, so you get, um, uh, this is obviously all the sensor position stuff and the data, live data that you can get. And this is uh, the data stream stuff that you can actually uh, record and then um, print out uh, as you're driving along. So, uh, it's taking, you know, it's reading the sensors fine, it says it's 25 degrees uh, in the intake and it is 25, well it's hot, I know that's today. Um, so uh, I've got to say, uh, um, this unit actually delivers more than I thought it would. If anybody um, is further interested in um, that aspect of this unit in terms of updating it and also how the freeze frame and live data works for uh, use on a PC uh, let me know in the comments and I'll look to do a, a second video on a bit more in depth into the actual use of it uh, onboard monitoring when the engines not running we're not going anywhere at the moment it doesn't support evaporative test it's already told us that and I know that from the ECU so let's have a look at vehicle information uh, okay so those things aren't um, supported Let's have a look at lookup. Oh, okay, you can input your code here, and it does state this, that you can actually um, look up uh, codes. Okay, so you can scroll through all the codes.
I'm sure there's probably a way to input them in, but I haven't had a look. So let's just press enter and see if that gives us anything. No, it just gives us the description. And that's quite useful, actually, because um, obviously, you know, you want to have an idea of what the code is. And you can go on Google and um, check these as well. But it's nice to have a uh, thing. Um, okay, my overall view of this unit. Um, I like the unit, and uh, if I didn't want the functions of uh, Bluetooth, because uh, I've got the OBD Link uh, LX, and I wanted that because I'm going to put a dash pod here, uh, and the screen's going in there, and that OBD Link LX is going to drive that. But in terms of actual um, mechanical repair and interrogating the ECU and clearing fault codes and general health check of the car um, I think this is a nice device um, it could be improved with a rubber uh, edge that I would have liked to have seen that that would have been nice or even if they did an optional rubber cover to go on it is it worth the 30 something pounds I would pay that. Uh, I think that is um, quite good value for money actually for what you get in the device and you can also uh, print live data and review live data all in one unit. Uh, the screen is clear. Um, so yeah this is the Autofix OM126. Uh, you can um, buy it from Amazon. Uh, the, the links to the uh, purchase pages for Amazon UK and the US are uh, on uh, in the description below uh, thank you to autofix for sending me uh, the device to be able to have a look at it and um, that's all for now and i look forward to seeing you in the next video thank you